This is uh, the monthly tech meet at Ronnie's Garage for the Rolls Royce Owners Club of Southern California. Today we're going to be working on a Silver Cloud II, and what we're going to do is take apart the steering box, which is uh, quite interesting. And, and I will cover the different areas where there are problems and uh, how to fix it. Okay, this is a Silver Cloud II steering box. The Silver Cloud III looks exactly the same. There's a little bit different inside. This is the valve body here. This is what gives you your boost. Um, you see it's got all these funny fittings out here. And it's got this gear out here, and you wonder, there's no steering wheel connected here. On the Silver Cloud 2 and 3, what they have is this is offset a little bit from the steering shaft coming down out of the car. So there's another gear right here. There's a, a transfer box, they call it. But the steering wheel comes down this way, and it turns this gear. So when you turn this right, this one goes the other direction because they just work differently. So you have four hoses that come to this. This is the small one with a small fitting is your high pressure coming from your pump. This big fat one over here, right next to it, is the return hose. That goes back up to the reservoir for when you're not using the extra boost. And then these two here, top and bottom, are the two directions. Now we're going to move right up over your head, Steve. And these two hoses here go to the steering ram. What you have here is you have like a piston assembly out here. It hangs out in front, so it tends to get bent a lot from those parking things. But those hoses go to either side of this, and they help give your steering linkages the boost it needs. The steering box still turns the linkages, but this gives it the added boost. All right. And this is a, they call it a worm and roller type steering box, and when I get it apart, you'll see. What you have is this shaft going through here has a gear on it, and it's called a worm gear. It's like a spiral cut. And then this shaft here, your pitman shaft, comes down, and all it has is a roller with a V in it that slides between those worms. Okay? So now I'm going to pull it apart for you. This, this gear on the end is held on with a uh, uh, tapered shaft. And what I do, I use my, this is my little butterfly gun. So we'll take out the bolt on the end, and it's got fluid in it. There's an O-ring inside the shaft that has gone bad, and that's why this is full of fluid. Okay, now we have to pull this off. It's on a tapered shaft, so it's pretty tight. So How do the O-rings go bad? Old age. So they're made of what, rubber? They're made of rubber. Okay. Uh, I don't know what kind they used back then on these, could, but... Could just say rubber? Uh, Buna is what you use usually on the uh, steer, uh, transmission fluid, power steering fluid, and stuff like that. Uh, so I use... This is a, just a steering wheel puller is basically what it is. And I've got a bit on the end that's going to go on the outside of this bolt. You say, why am I going to put the bolt back on? This shaft is hollow that goes through here, and there's a plug on the end, and that's where the O-ring goes, and that's why we have fluid coming out here, because that plug on the end, the O-ring has gone bad, and it's seeping back. But this shaft is hollow, and if I use, normally these will have like a cone, a point, and if you do that in there, and I've done it before, and, you, and it's really tight, and you put a lot of pressure on it, you flare that out. We don't want to do that. Parts for these are very expensive. And the reason we're taking this one apart is this car drove very funny. It, it would, uh, you go into, like, driving on the road, you go into a turn, and it would kind of not do it, and all of a sudden it'd start going up too much. And it just didn't feel right. The car just didn't feel I'm talking right. Talking about a thrill. And uh, <laughs> before I take it apart, I'll explain it to you. <clears throat> There's four and a half, approximately four and a half turns, lock to lock. So when you turn your steering wheel all the way to the one side, we'll say it's, we'll just say to the right for, it's four and a half turns back the other direction. And on the center of that, two and a quarter, is where these gears are centered. And at that point, you should have just a, just a slight amount of resistance. You kind of want to high side it, so it's got to be a little bit tight. So I'm going to back this off to the center point. There's one. There's holes on the end, so I can count it. Two and a quarter. See, now it's getting really tight. Oh, wait, let's go all the way. See, this one is super tight in the center. I can feel it. It's really tight. You see, 
See how much resistance it's taken me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It should just be maximum inch pounds, just yeah. two inch. You, it's, a, it's a feel that you get. So this is really too tight. And the way this is adjusted, that mesh, or I forget what they call it, is you move this shaft in and out. Okay. Now the way they do that, when we get it apart, you'll be able to see it better, is this shaft has uh, uh, taper bearings on the bottom and on the top. And these plates are offset. So you can adjust the mesh by turning this upper plate and or the bottom plate. So what has happened is somebody has adjusted this incorrectly. They tried tightening up perhaps too much play in the steering and they got it so tight that it's making it react wrong. So the way this valve works inside is when, let's say, it's kind of variable in a way because of the fact that you really only need your power steering when you're parked or in a parking lot. When you want to have to turn it to get into a parking spot. When you're on a road, the less power steering the better because you can feel the road more. So the way they designed this is so when you're stationary and you turn the wheel, it's going to turn this big shaft here that goes to all the steering. It's going to feel resistance. So when it feels that resistance, there's just an ever so slight amount of play in the valve inside here. Just a couple thousandths, it'll move back and forth. And what happens is when you feel the resistance, it pulls the valve inside to open up to one of these, whichever direction it wants to go here. Just a couple of valves right here? Yeah, maximum. Wow. It is, it's very, very hard to set these up. Yeah, oh, okay. This is your pitman arm right here that connects to the steering system. So. At, at the tight spot in the center, which is what you want to get to when you set them up, there's no play in this. But as you get further away from the center, you start getting play in there, and that's normal. Okay? So what I do when I hook up my gauges and all that, I get to mount this on my vise so that I can clamp this in the center, and then I'll take and I'll use a, a inch pound needle uh -huh. torque uh -huh. and I'll go one direction and then the other direction and see the pressure differentiation. Uh -huh. And then what I do is I play with shims, there's yeah. a lot of shims in there, yeah. and move the spool valve okay. one way or the other to get it so it's even both directions. Very difficult, painstaking and annoying actually. Typical Rolls Royce in other words. <laughs> huh? Typical Rolls Royce in other words. But it's, I've never seen anything like this on any other car, this steering box. Okay, so what I'm going to do, on this gear, there are two holes, and they're not threaded. So what I do is I take a long bolt, and I put a nut on the back side. This is a little tricky because it's at an angle. Now I'm going to drop it. If you try to use a jaw puller, you could damage the teeth on this, so I don't recommend that. Once I get it started, I'll show you what I had to do. All right. So now what you see is you see the nut on the end of this, and I'll just run it till the thread starts showing, and then I'll get the other nut. And if you notice, I put the, the bolt back on, and I thread it. I'm going to thread it in almost all the way back, but not. And what we're going to do is going to push against the threads in there. And, and when it pops off, it shouldn't pop off. It might because the bolt's a little smaller. Sometimes they come off in a hurry. There we go. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to take it apart and show you how it works. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Is this something that's pretty common or pretty usual? It's not not very usual. Usually, the biggest problem with these is they'll leak. Okay, and I'll cover that right now. Biggest source of leaks are the two big seals. There's a seal down here. It's called a Pittman shaft seal, and there's another seal behind here, which we'll get to. And when this seal leaks up here, you don't know for a while. Reason being is there's this transfer gearbox up here that has O-rings and it's sealed and then your steering shaft comes up and it's got a rubber boot around it. So what it does is just fills this up and then you get this leak back under your seat 
way back behind this and you say, well, where's that leaking? And if you look from underneath, you'll see the steering housing coming down and there's a little weep hole and it'll be coming out of there. And this transfer gearbox normally has 90 weight oil on it. There it is. She's off. Sometimes those go, if you can take those away, cut loose pretty loud. Yeah, normally they do. Here we go. All right, we didn't damage anything. If you look at this, it's tapered, as is this shaft, and that's why it gets so tight. When you tighten it up, it, it just gets really tight. It's a wedge itself. Hmm? It's like a wedge. I like a wedge? It's like a round wedge. wedge. Oh, wedge. Wedge. <laughs> Are you talking about my ex-wife? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Which one? I don't remember. <laughs> All right. Now here's where it gets messy. This outer plate right here, when you have, it's on the, uh, the transfer box. There's bolts going through here that hold it on. I pull this out without pulling that part. Um, it's less work. There we go. Okay, there's that seal at the top I was talking about. Not a whole lot of pressure here. You can see this has been apart. There's silicone in here. Okay, I had a feeling it had been apart, and that's why I told the guy we need to take it apart because I don't trust it. I don't want to just adjust it. So, on this O ring right here, gets squashed, and that's, that's your sealing. <laughs> And this is a Cloud 2 steering box. I mentioned it's different from a Cloud... Boy, there's a lot of silicone in here. That's, that's a killer for transmissions and steering boxes, is this extra silicone. Because if that gets into this valving system, if you're only moving one or two thousandths of an inch, that can plug up and cause a lot of grief. 